Hey, honey? Yeah, what's up? Everybody, it's your boy Barista Fan, and no, this is not a geeky grind. This is actually a Friday featurette that got inspired because of what I'm working on on my geeky grind, Necron Army. I went into the closet to try to find a base to fit one of these when I was putting them together because apparently I had lost a 40 millimeter base, and I found this box, which contained my copy of. In Search of Tomorrow. Uh, this is a documentary on 80s classics. Well, actually, not even classic. Like, every 80s sci-fi movie. They sat down and talked with film crew, special effects people, writers, directors, actors, people that made all these different movies. Not a lot of the big names that are in here, but uh, Bruce Boxleitner is in here talking about Tron. You got... Uh, What's his name? I've been watching a lot of Babylon 5 recently. He played Bester on Babylon 5. And he played Chekhov in Star Trek. I'm going to have to put the name down here just to be able to remember that. Wait, I don't have to put the name down here. It was Walter Cohen. Yeah, anyways, one of my favorite actors from that. Uh, loved when he played the villain Bester in Babylon 5. Bruce Boxleitner. there. So, it's a little nostalgic. Uh, but anyways, Babylon 5 is not covered in here, but a lot of the shows and movies that inspired that 90s and early 2000s and still resonate today, sci-fi is in here. Um, beginning of the documentary actually talks a lot about 50s sci-fi being the inspiration for a lot of the 80s sci-fi. It's, it's really good. And if you're a kid that grew up in the 80s watching sci-fi movies, like your boy here, you know that... It, this is just an amazing movie to watch. Granted, it's five hours long, but still, it's like I'm watching, I was re watching it to be able to do this video and talk about it. And I'm remembering a bunch of movies that I didn't actually get to see. I know, it's surprising. Like the, the cover, the, the little paper insert that comes with it, the little brochure. Uh, has 55 movies, but there's a bunch more movies that didn't even make it into the brochure because they're just mentioned in passing, but they're not deep dive discussed. And out of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, there were six of them that I know I haven't seen yet. That uh, definitely something that I want to now watch because of this. There's Galaxina. Uh, which is this parody sci-fi movie about uh, that definitely dives into the whole thing of you know android robots uh, and when they develop feelings and what actually is sentience, which is a big theme through a lot of '80s robot movies, especially Short Circuit, one of my personal favorite '80s movies growing up. Um, and there's the Final Countdown that came out, which was a really great movie that. Uh, was the premise was, what if a U.S. Air Force carrier from the 80s got sent back in time 40 years to actually try to stop Pearl Harbor and the moral ethics of time travel? Which, again, that's a huge cool theme to go through and dive into, both in movies and in D&D. &D. Like, your characters get transported back to a big epic battle in the past. They have the magic. They have the power to stop it. But do they? Do they rewrite the course of history or allow things to fall out? To fall out. Play out. That's the word I was looking for. Play out like, it, like it's supposed to. And you get that whole. Te and if they don't, let history play out how it is. You got temporal paradox, causality wave that changes everything. Or they find out that they've gone back and they're actually supposed to weaken the big bat, bat so he doesn't actually destroy the. The attack, make the attack and actually win the battle hands down, you know. That, 
idea has permeated through a lot of other sci-fi time travel stories, sci-fi and fantasy time travel stories. So it's like, ooh, I want to go back and watch this because I haven't seen that one yet. Um, and there's the Incredible Shrinking Woman, which again I didn't realize there was a that was actually like a thing in the '80s. Was like a bunch of different movies all about people getting shrunk, and I'm like, wait, honey, I shrunk the kids in her space. Yeah, 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 getting shrunk down tiny. I'm like. You know, that's even a great idea to, like, use for, again, like, I'm looking at all these different story outlines, all these different stuff that's happening in here. I'm like, there's a lot of, like, like if you're a D&D &D player, there's a lot of inspiration for some cool adventures in these old adventure stories from the 80s. Which, you now, if you're playing with a group from the 80s, then, you know, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, I remember that movie. I know that. I got that reference. The, the whole Captain America thing, but... You know, if it's people that, like, your friend group hasn't watched a lot of old, oh, I hate using that term, but anyways, classic 80 movies, or obscure 80s movies, you can, you know, file the serial numbers off, make it your own, and get some inspiration, which is definitely something I would recommend about sitting down and watching this and getting ideas and find some cool new movies to watch. Uh, Megaforce, which apparently was like this like G.I. Joe knockoff that Hasbro thought was going to be like a big launch thing, but I never even heard of Megaforce. It was a complete flop. And But I'm like, mm, it's 80s movie, action, sci-fi, I should watch this. Uh, Space Hunter, which was like an alien bounty hunter thing that I was like, mm, that sounds interesting. And then uh, Miracle Mile. What the heck was that one about? That one? Oh, it was like... Uh, I know they were talking about the day after tomorrow. It's like a like a nuclear attack movie, I think. I know I was getting like way too distracted by like all the cool stuff movies that are in here. That I, I absolutely love like you know two thirds of all the original Star Wars trilogy came out in the eighties. Flash Gordon was in the eighties. Uh, Back to the Future's Part One and Two. So you know two thirds of two of the best eighties sci-fi trilogies, two of the best sci-fi trilogies, two out of three of the movies all came out in the 80s. Then, uh, you know, of course, we had Dune and Tron, Weird Science, that... If you haven't seen that movie, I would definitely recommend going and seeing the TV series that came out in the 90s. Like, it, it's kind of weird, like a lot of the 80s and 90s stuff. The late 80s stuff, like, blends blurs over into the 90s but and of course one of my favorite sci-fi movies that I always always wanted to actually do as like a uh, d d RPG like one shot adventure the inspiration behind me wanting to be a Tyranid player for uh, Warhammer 40k Aliens yeah, of course. That. You know, they had like talks with the with the writers. Uh, James Cameron is actually uh, one of the people they interviewed for the for this film. They've got uh, the girl who played Newt, or well, the woman who had played Newt, who's all grown up now. Uh, she's part of the interviewing cast. They have a loving uh, talk about Bill Paxton, who was a great great action movie. He didn't play him the leading main character. He played the goofy comic relief guy. No, he's the one in Aliens that goes, Game over, man! Game over! We're all dead! You know, he was notorious for being, like, a supporting cast character who was just the comic relief who felt like every one of my friend Josh Sennett's and uh, my other friend uh, Will, C Will Copley, like, their D&D characters would always say something like Bill Paxson would say. And just like, oh, man, what? Ah, trying to do... The the big the uh, the big tough guy lines, but he's just coming out like a complete comic relief character. But uh, no, I I love this. Um, how I got my hands on this was this was actually released by the same people who did the uh, In Search of Darkness uh, series of movies, which are a series of documentaries where they go and talk to because. There was a lot more horror movies that came out in the 80s. So they got like four volumes of their horror of the horror movie series and they decided, well, we've gotten so popular with doing all of these of talking with all these different directors, special effects, writers, actors and everything 
that they decided to do a sci-fi version, and they put this up on Kickstarter, and at the time, I was a big Kickstarter, you know, guy, I was looking in, finding lots of cool stuff, uh, got some stuff for Dungeons and Dragons, uh, in the retro reviews that are coming up, I've gotten off of Kickstarter, gotten a few tabletop games, uh, and my Rampart City Ruins terrain set, which I definitely need to show off at some point in a geeky grind once I actually get a table set up in the house of it, show that sucker off. Um, that was a Kickstarter. So I backed this on Kickstarter, and they sent me the digital copy, and so I was just like watching the digital, I just watched the digital copy, what, yeah, this is awesome, followed away back in my brain, the actual physical version of it showed up, I'm like, oh, this is so sweet, because, you know, I got the DVD, and I got poster of the movie, which I need to frame and put up. And I got some cool stickers uh, to put onto my battle mat. On, the, on my battle mat, on my battle cases. And yeah, they gave me a digital copy of the uh, In Search of Darkness Part 3. And, you know, this was a while ago. This was, uh, the In Search of Tomorrow came out about two, three years ago. Uh, two years ago when it came out. So they, I've gotten alerts that the fourth version was in the works and everything like that. But I really do hope they do a second one of this. Cause I, and I really hope I haven't missed out that they've done a second one of this. I should do some, a little more research, find out if there's a work on In Search of Tomorrow 2 yet. But this is pretty well detailed. I mean, it's going to be hard to find, like, some sci-fi movies from the 80s they didn't put into this. Like I said, there was a lot more horror movies from the 80s than there were sci-fi movies, but it was the second golden age for science fiction. In the 1950s was definitely, like, the peak. Like, the writing was awesome, but the special effects were horrible. In the 80s, the special effects were great. In some places, they were just beginning, like, digital stuff at that point. They dive into talking about all the advances in digital uh, special effects. And they're talking about the BFX artists where they're going through each year. So Last Starfighter was a... There's a good section on Last Starfighter in here. Love that movie too. But yeah, no, this is... This is basically a crash course on 80s movies. And if you out there have seen In Search for Tomorrow and want to talk about what your favorite sci-fi movie is from the 80s, leave it in the comments down below. I would probably have to say, if I had to pick one that I probably could watch on repeat all the time, I couldn't really. It's like The Explorers, Last Starfighter, and Empire Strikes Back are like my three favorite sci-fi movies ever, and they came out in the 80s. We're discussed in this. I didn't even realize The Explorers. The movie wasn't even finished when they released it. But that's a story for you to find out in this so uh, easy to find on the internet just search up in search of tomorrow you'll be able to find a uh, be able to get yourself a digital copy of it and uh, yeah that's all I've got to really say about this peace hey everybody thanks for staying till the end of the episode uh, remember to like share air subscribe follow us on Facebook at board barista productions and if you want to support us, Patreon link at the bottom.